If you want to control electronic devices like this relay or this motor, you can do so with an ESP8266 and a browser with MicroPython on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you want to get started with electronics, there's a number of different platforms you can try. And the ESP8266 is a great start, but usually you have to program it in Arduino. And for beginners, C++ is not always easy. Now, recently I've been really into this language, MicroPython, which is a way of using Python code on a microcontroller like this to control basically anything such as this relay or this motor. Now today, I'm going to walk you through how to do this in a browser. And basically, this is a way of controlling any electronic component you would with an Arduino directly from your computer in Jupyter Notebooks. Now, in order to follow along, you'll need an ESP8266, something to control like this relay or a motor, and a computer running Jupyter Notebooks, which requires Python. If you want to buy this stuff, you can check out the links in the description in order to find out more about where you can find the ESP8266, a breadboard, and some other electronic components. Once you have those ready to go, then we can begin. Today, our goal is to do something that's very difficult in Arduino. Get this motor up and running and be able to control it easily in a matter of minutes. So to start, we're going to go ahead and plug in our ESP8266, which today is paired with a D1 Mini and is plugged into a relay switch, which basically is like an electronic switch that you're used to on a wall socket. However, it switches on and off when we send it a power signal. Now that is plugged into this battery, and as soon as we give it power, it'll turn on this motor by applying the power from this nine volt battery. So a pretty simple test, but an easy way to see whether or not it's simple to control this whole setup with MicroPython. So the first step is going to be once we plug it into our computer to identify it. On a Mac OS computer, the best way to do this is by typing ls slash dev slash cu dot asterisk. And here you can see the result is this line right here, which although both of these are associated with a device, I recommend you use the one that starts with WC rather than USB serial, because for whatever reason, this one just doesn't seem to work. Now, there are two commands you'll need to run, and I've already covered this in a previous tutorial, but I want to go over it again just for anyone who's watching it for the first time so you understand just how easy it is to get a new device up and running with MicroPython. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this command in, and that is esptool.py port, uh, the serial port that we just found, and then erase flash. And we're going to be starting from scratch as this device is totally erased and ready for us to upload a new binary, which will allow us to then run Python code on it. So as soon as this is done, we're going to to select a binary file to upload. And that will allow us to then connect via Jupyter Notebooks in a little bit and start to run this motor with a couple lines of code. So here we are done. So we're going to run esptool.py again. And then here you can see, I'm going to slowly scroll through and replace serial. But while I'm doing that, you can see that I'm going to be flashing this ESP8266 2019 binary, which will allow us to then run Python code. So I have pasted this in, and of course it's probably the same, but if you plug this into a different USB port, then it can change. So it can be very frustrating. And you'll see that it connects and is able to successfully start loading the new firmware binary. So when this is done, we're going to briefly go through how to connect Jupyter Notebooks to all of this. And that really is the magic here, being able to do this from my computer as though I have direct control of the motor. So if you're into just science in general, this is really awesome because you can start to work with sensors and all sorts of other stuff that usually work with Arduino. Now, I'm going to reference this guide, and I, I really, really, really enjoy this, so you should check it out too. This is more about data science and hacking, but the MicroPython and ESP using Jupyter Notebook guide by Marcelo Rivali is fantastic and has taught me a ton about how to do all of this. So following his guide, if you just do git clone and then this particular repo that has the Jupyter MicroPython kernel, I would do this here, but of course it's going to fail because it's already there. We'll be able to do a pip install of the Jupyter MicroPython kernel. However, I do recommend that you modify a little bit of this and instead you do a pip3 install rather than just pip. So there we go. We have done a pip3 install. It successfully installed Jupyter MicroPython kernel. So when we open a Jupyter notebook, we should get the opportunity to actually create one that is connected to our USB serial device. So I'm going to type Jupyter notebook. And then that should open up to a new one. And I'll search for null byte motor. And this is the code we're going to work with today. And you can see some of the responses have already been run, but I'm going to step through each of them and explain exactly what's happening. 
Now this first command will need to paste in the serial uh, port that we found in order to make sure that it, whoa, not that, in order to make sure that is it is connecting to the right device. So I'm gonna go back here and grab this serial port. And again, I'm doing this out of habit because there have been so many times where I plug it in again and this changes, so make sure that this is correct. By running serial connect to the correct port with the baud rate of 115200, we can run this and if we see ready, then we should be ready to go. That, that's how long it took. So to prove that I'm not lying, we can go ahead and create something. In this case, it's LED, but let's call it motor. Uh, and I'll copy and paste this in a couple of different places to make this part run. But we can say the motor has a value of one and the motor has a value of zero. And that is effectively on and off. Now to make this happen, we need to import from machine, machine import time, uh, uh, sorry, from machine import pin and from time import sleep. And that will allow us to also hold it on and hold it off for an amount of time that we can control. Now again, this is a pretty simple setup. We're using a relay, switching it just on and off, which is connected to a motor and a nine volt battery. So let's see if we can control it with micro pipe on. Whoa, there we go. So for 0.2 seconds, we precisely control this motor to turn on. Now we don't need to just stick to doing this with one and zero. Python is really flexible. So if we want to change this to on and off, we can go ahead and do that as well. And it works just the same. Now, if we want to loop things, then that could get interesting. And we can start to use different Python data structures that are really fun and short and easy and don't require any of the stuff that our, unfortunately Arduino IDE does. And I don't mean to talk too poorly of Arduino, Arduino IDE, but it is not friendly for beginners if they're looking to just spin a motor or get to know how to run something. So let's see if we can just turn the motor.on and motor.off. And we're gonna do this for 10 times each. So we might break this because the tape is not that strong, but let's go ahead and run it anyway. If you wanna stop your code, you can always press the stop icon here. And if it just keeps running or if you forget and do a while true and it just runs forever, you can press that to interrupt and be able to submit new code. Now, just like that, we were able to quickly connect to and run this motor all from a browser window. So if you're interested in data science or sensors or motors or lasers, this is absolutely the best way to get started. If you are a beginner or someone who already knows a little bit of Python, MicroPython is probably the best way to get started interacting with electronics from your laptop, spinning motors, shining lasers, and doing all sorts of other interesting things. Now, if you want to do this, you can check out the article if you run into any problems linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can hit me up on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.